Welcome to Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and coming up in today's news, local winners at New Zealand Food Awards, public help needed to find missing 14 year old, Gigatown Nelson support comes from across the globe, police notices and road operations, costume collection on loan. Sea Lord has netted the supreme award for its smoked salmon in the New Zealand Food Awards late last week. With the traditionally prepared Sea Lord Group's hot Manuka smoked salmon receiving a resounding thumbs up from both the professional panel of judges and the consumer judging panel at this year's New Zealand Food Awards. The 2014 Supreme Award winner is smoked in the traditional way over Manuka wood. Judge Ray McVinney said that winners he liked most this year were steeped in tradition but with a modern twist. He said his favourite was very contemporary product that referenced a very traditional one. The best food products always have some connection to tradition. Nelson Artisan Drinks Company Chia has also been named a winner for the Massey University Healthy Choice at the same New Zealand Food Awards last week. The company was launched in 2012 by father and daughter co-owners Ben and Chloe Van Dyke. Chia produces three all-natural drinks containing the chia seed, which is a natural superfood rich in vegetable, omega-3, complete proteins, minerals, electrolytes, fibre and antidoxins. At the New Zealand Food Awards, those health benefits were recognised with Chloe accepting the award on behalf of the company. In her acceptance speech, she said the company has a huge passion for providing healthier alternatives to everyday Kiwis and she was really proud to receive this award. Chia is made by hydrating the seeds then blending with natural super juices including blueberry, black currant as well as orange and passion fruit. The drinks are bottled in Nelson without any artificial colours, flavours, preservatives and no added sugar making Chia 100% natural. With a passion for healthy, active living, both Ben and Chloe started using Chia as an everyday health drink at home. After noticing the improvements to their endurance, energy, concentration and well-being, Ben and Chloe decided to share Chia with others. Ben and Chloe are both passionate about delivering a healthy, natural drink and are currently trialling growing organic chia seeds in Nelson with the intention of developing a local supply of chia seeds in the next few years. We will have the interview with Chloe Van Dyke tomorrow. Have you seen Olivia Rainish, also known as Olivia McRae? She has been missing from her Nelson home since the 24th of September. Police and her family are very concerned for her welfare. Following some unkind postings on the police Facebook page, the community has come out strongly offering support to Olivia and her family and slamming those that wrote disparaging remarks, with some calling on the police to talk with those individuals concerning online bullying. If you have information about where she may be, please contact the Nelson Police on 546-3840 or you can give anonymous information by calling Crime Stoppers 0800 555 111. Gigatown Nelson support came from across the globe when a woman from northern France helped get the Gigatown Nelson effort across the line and into the finals. Maria Justin won the latest social media competition meant to drum up international support for Gigatown Nelson. More than a thousand entries were received from 41 different countries. The prize included 4,000 towards air travel and 1,000 spending money, camper van rental and an inter-islander ferry pass, accommodation and activity passes to places like the Abel Tasman National Park. Marie says she can't wait to visit Nelson next March with her brother. She's a huge fan of New Zealand thanks to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and coming to New Zealand she said is a dream come true. Marie won by signing up and choosing to support Nelson. She then completed the online quiz and was in to win the grand prize. Glenda Bush of Gigatown Nelson campaign team said that she can't believe how many people across the globe have become supporters of Nelson's social media effort. They knew they had a local group posting frequently with hashtag Gigatown Nelson through Facebook and Twitter. But this competition really brought out people from across the globe and the organisers have been blown away. 
She said they owed a huge vote of thanks to all the organisations who sponsored the prizes and made this possible. Entrants represented six of the seven continents. The Gigatown Nelson team is currently working on another set of exciting prizes for some more competitions to attract even more supporters, which adds to the overall score. Police have a stolen trailer they would like to find and return to its owner. At 9pm on Saturday the 13th of September, a small ute pulled up at the front of Mitre 10 Mega. The driver got out, cut the chain securing the trailers which are for sale, hooked up the brand new tandem axle trailer to his ute and drove off. Anyone with information to identify the ute and its owner or the whereabouts of the trailer should call Nelson Police on 546 3840. Also, members of the public will be pleased to know that Mike the Deviant Window Washer has been charged. Complaints came into police about him when he was going door to door looking for window washing work and was involved in an indecent assault. There have been numerous comments on Facebook of this man coming to their houses and that this was very worrying for many people living in Nelson. Police would like to hear from anyone who have complaints concerning this man. Again, please call Nelson Police 546 3840. In response to a number of complaints from the public and also recent crashes, Nelson Bay's police have conducted an operation focusing on heavy traffic on the highways heading south. The operation focused on driver behaviour of all commercial and passenger service vehicles travelling along the Shenandoah Highway section of State Highway 65 through to Nelson on State Highway 6. Highway Patrol Sergeant Terry Richards said at the conclusion of the operation that overall he was very pleased with the behaviour of commercial drivers. Police were checking the speed on a large number of heavy vehicles travelling through and only eight were over the limit. The highest speed detected was 102 kilometres an hour. A further 19 private motorists received speed infringement notices. A number of complaints police received about commercial drivers related to cell phone use and that was evident in the operation with 10 commercial drivers receiving infringement notices for using a cell phone. What police noticed was that drivers were more likely to use their phone when they got into a 50 km hour speed zone, so police will be paying more attention to that. Six private motorists received infringements for cell phone use also. Sergeant Richards said a further nine commercial drivers received infringement notices for not wearing a seatbelt, along with 22 other drivers, and he said that there were no excuses for any driver not wearing their seatbelts while travelling on highways. Heavy vehicle drivers are as vulnerable as any other road user. And finally, it is the school holidays, and if you are at a loss of things to do, we have managed to catch up with one happening that should get people of all ages enthralled. Broad Green House is playing host to a 1900s costume display which is privately owned and currently on display for the public for a limited time. We met with curator Margaret Paul to find out more about this display. Hi, my name is Stephanie from Mainland TV and today we're in front of this lovely old Broad Green historic house to find out about this beautiful costume display. Next to me is Margaret Paul, the curator of this house. Margaret, could you please tell us where do the costumes come from? Uh, they come from um, a family called the Thomas family in Nelson. Uh, originally they probably would have been brought out from UK, but um, Mary Thomas was the person that um, owned these costumes and they've been donated to Broad Green by the family. Do you have any idea of the age of the costumes? Uh, they range from about 1890 to 1900s and there's four pieces in the collection. How did they get to come here? Uh, the family decided that they would like to have them um, cared for properly so they first of all donated them to Founders Park and um, Founders Park don't have the facilities to care for costumes so they then decided that they would give them to Broad Green Historic House who have somebody to keep care for them. Are they mainly from New Zealand or are they also from overseas? Uh, that's something I'm not sure about, but I would think that um, they originally would have been worn overseas and then brought out when the family came out to New Zealand. How long will this display be here for, for people to see it? Um, it's going to go through until the 7th of November um, and it's, we're open every day um, from half past 10 right through to half past 4. Could you tell us anything about the cost? 
The cost for adults is uh, $4 and for senior citizens $3 and for children a dollar. And it's something for the children to do in the holidays to bring their family with them and have a look. Thank you. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region for your diary.